Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide Wayne. Today I'm going to be going over how to use the Moto G 5G for beginners. I'm going to walk you through everything you'll need to know to learn how to use this phone. Here's a quick rundown of what I will cover in the video. We're going to start with a tour of the phone, so all the exterior buttons, what they do. Then we'll go over all the on-screen buttons and show you how to navigate the screen, how do you get around, how do you find everything. Uh, from there, I'll move into how to download applications. Um, then we'll go over how to make calls and how to send text messages. Then after that, we will go into uh, how to set up your email, how to uh, make the text larger in case you want the words to be bigger. And then uh, the video will end with how to take pictures and where do you find the pictures after you take them. So that's a rundown of everything I will cover in the video. And along the way, I will stop and share little tips and important information that I think is helpful for you to know. So just keep in mind, I'll be stopping and doing things like that. I wanna start with, um, again, the tour of the phone. Let's get right into the first section and just go over all the buttons so you know um, operating the phone. So on the left side of the phone, you won't find any buttons, but you will find a SIM card tray. Now this is where um, you would put in a memory card if you were trying to put in a, a card in the phone or if you needed to take out the SIM card of the phone, use your SIM tool and you would put it in this little hole and that's how you would access the memory card that's in the phone. On the right side of the phone, you will find a um, volume up, volume down, and you'll find a power button. Now, the way the power button works is you press it once, it'll wake up the phone, press it again, the phone will go to sleep. The phone is still on because when I press the button, guess what, it wakes up. If you wanna actually turn the phone off, you need to hold down on the power button for one second. That'll bring up this menu, and then you can tap on this button to restart the phone or this button to power off the phone. Now, along with that power button, it does one more thing, and which is you can use this power button as a fingerprint reader. You can actually program your fingerprint in the phone, so whenever you place your finger on the power button, it'll wake up the phone, and that's if you have a password set up on the phone. I won't be covering passwords in this video, but I'll be doing a separate video, which is a how to set up the Moto G 5G, and I'll cover in that video how to set up that fingerprint sensor. So after you watch this one, make sure you find that video and you watch that one. Now, we wanna get into the phone. To do that, you just take your finger, make sure the screen is, is lit up or awoken. So for example, you'll wanna see this on the screen first. Take your finger, put it on the screen, and just drag your finger up the screen, and that's how you unlock the phone, okay? Once again, take your finger, put it on the screen, and just drag up, and that's how you get into the phone. Now, before I get into navigating the screen, I just want to talk about the bottom of the phone here, which is, this is the charging port right here. And if you ever need to purchase a charger for this phone, it is a type C charging type, that's type C. Your phone will come with the cable and the charger, but if you ever need to get a new one, you'll need to do a search for a type C charger. And on the left here, you'll find the auxiliary port. That is where you'll plug in your headphones. Okay, so we're in the phone now. Let's talk about how to navigate the screen. At the bottom, you'll find three buttons here, a back button, a home button and a recent apps button. Now, let me start with talking about the home button. So this button essentially takes you back to this screen. No matter what you do on the phone, when you tap on this button, it takes you back to your home screen. So if I were to tap on this icon, which is the Google Chrome icon, which is uh, also known as your web browser, if I go to the web and I wanna search a website or try to find something, maybe google.com, AOL, whatever, if I wanna go back to the home screen, I just have to tap this little dot at the bottom here and it takes me back to the home screen. So that's your fail safe. You ever hit the wrong button, hit this, it takes you back to your home screen. Now, to the left here, you'll find your back button. Now the back button just simply takes you back one step. If you select something on the screen, usually this will take you back one step. Let me show you an example of this. I'm gonna swipe down from the top of the screen. I'm gonna swipe down again. And in the bottom right corner, you'll find this little gear or wheel. 
And this is your shortcut to get to the settings menu. So we're in the settings menu and let's say you tap on display. Well, guess what? When you want to get go back one page, you can tap on this arrow at the top to take you back or you have your shortcut here that just takes you back one step or one page and that took us back to the main screen of the settings. So think of it as it just takes me back one step. Now guess what? If I tap the button again, it's going to take me out of the app and back to the home screen. So just keep in mind it always takes you back one step. Later on in the video, I'll be using that button, so just keep an eye out. I'll do, do a few more demonstrations so you understand when to use it. To the right here, you'll find the Recent Apps button. Now tapping on this will show you all the apps that are currently running on the phone. Every time you open up one of these little icons here, they, so these icons are known as apps. Apps is short for application. Think of it like a computer. Computers have programs, phones have apps or applications. So when you hear me use the term apps or applications, I'm just referring to these little icons, okay? So whenever you tap on one of these icons, for example, we just tapped on the web browser or Google Chrome, it takes you to whatever that app is or that program. And if I hit the home button, it's gonna take me back to the home screen, but guess what? That app is still running in the background of the phone. Just because we go back to the home screen doesn't mean the app is closed. So when I tap on this button, the recent apps button, guess what? Here's my web browser. I can simply go right back to it and continue using it like before. Now, if I hit the recent apps button, I can simply swipe up or drag up and this closes out all the applications that are running. So if you wanna make sure no programs are running in the back of the phone, you need to first tap on recent apps and then you need to swipe up to close out the applications, okay? So these are the three main buttons you'll be using to navigate the phone. Now when you're on the home screen, if you swipe up, this takes you to what is called your app drawer. All the apps are found here and every time you download an app, it's always gonna show up in this list right here. Let's hit the home button. The next section we're gonna go over is what is called the notification panel. So take your finger, you're gonna swipe down, start at the top of the screen and swipe down. And this is basically where you'll see all notifications that come through the phone. So think of it like a digital mailbox. Um, every time you get a text message, an email, a missed call, they'll all show up in this section. So if you haven't looked at your phone in a while and you're trying to see if you have messages or whatever, so you just swipe down and they're all gonna show up in this section. So right now I have a, a text message right here. Um, I have a notification from my ring camera and a few other messages. So all your apps are gonna use this section to communicate. Also, this is an, an email right here and I can simply tap on it and this will take me to my inbox and then allow me to read that email. So um, that's where you, again, that's your digital mailbox where you'll see everything that's coming through your phone. And once you've looked at the message, you can simply swipe over to get rid of it. That's how you clear out things in this section. Or you can swipe up all the way to the top and at the bottom here, you'll see a button that says clear all and that will get rid of all the notifications after you've looked at them. Now, let's swipe down again. At the top of the screen here, you'll find some shortcuts. These are shortcuts to different um, settings that are on the phone, and they're the most frequently used settings. So for example, this is the Wi-Fi uh, setting right here. So if you want to connect to a Wi-Fi network at your house or a coffee shop or a friend's house, once you swipe down, you take your finger and just place it on this um, option here for one second. It's gonna open up the menu that's gonna basically show you all the Wi-Fi networks that, are, that you're currently able to connect to. So these are all the different networks and let's say you're trying to connect to your friend's Wi-Fi and maybe it's this one. You tap on it and then it's gonna ask you to put in the password. You're gonna type in that password and after that, you'll be connected to their network and you'll stay connected until you leave the area. Now, let's swipe down again. You have your mobile data switch if you ever wanna turn off your data. If you wanna to connect to a Bluetooth device like a Bluetooth speaker or a headset, 
you can same thing take your finger put it hold down on this button for one second and that'll take you to your Bluetooth menu to let you look at all the devices that you can currently pair to now there are more options than these four to get to the other options you're gonna swipe down a second time and this will bring more options on screen so let me show you the whole thing so you're gonna swipe down once and then swipe down again and that's how you'll see the other shortcuts that you have access to so for example your auto rotation your flashlight turning this on will use your camera uh, flash as a flashlight which is can be super helpful airplane mode for when you travel here is your uh, brightness adjuster so if you want to raise the screen brightness or lower the screen brightness it all happens here um, there's also more shortcuts so you can swipe to the left like this and you can see more options that have shown up here this one is telling us that we have a system update so that's one your hotspot so go through here when you have some time so you can look at all the different shortcuts that are available and again all these are also in the settings menu um, but here they're just shortcuts you can get to them faster so this concludes the first section of the video that was simply just a tour and walkthrough of the entire phone so at this point you should at least know where everything is and have some basic understanding about navigating the phone so next let's talk about how to make a phone call now at, in the bottom left corner of the screen you'll see your phone app you tap on the phone and then you're going to tap on the dialer this is going to bring up your keypad that's going to allow you to enter a number to call so let's give it a try right now i'm going to enter a phone number so there's our number and then i'm going to tap the green button to initiate the call there we go and if i want to go on speaker phone i'm going to hit the speaker button here if i want to mute the call i can do that here if i want to um, add another call to it to do a three-way I can hit more you hit more and then hit this and when you're all done with the call you're gonna hit the red button to end the call so that's a quick rundown of using the phone again here keypad enter the phone number make sure you enter the area code as well and then tap the green button to initiate the call okay next let's talk about how to answer the phone so I'm going to initiate a call and you can see what it looks like when a call comes through the phone. So here we go. It's, pop it's popping up at the top here. Let me turn the volume down. So super easy. You're going to either tap on the green button to answer the call or tap on the red button to decline the call, which means not answer. So let's answer it. Green button. Call is picked up. Same options, you can hit this button to put the call on speaker, mute, all the same options are there, and when you're all done, tap the red button to end the call. Now, the it's gonna look different if you're using the phone and the call comes through versus if the screen is off and someone calls you. So I'm gonna initiate another call, and this time, I want you to see what it looks like which is when you're not on the phone maybe the phone is in the other room and you run in and grab it if you want to answer the phone you have to take your finger and put it on this little circle here that has the phone icon and you drag up to answer or you drag down to decline okay so let's answer this call and we're going to basically drag up and that's going to pick up the call and allow us to start talking okay so just wanted to you know point out that it's gonna look different if you're using the phone versus if you're not using it and you need to know how to answer the phone either way so that's answering the phone next let's talk about how to send a text message so for that we're gonna tap on the message button which is to the right of the phone tap on the button in the bottom right corner start chat if you want to initiate a text message and in the upper right corner there's this little icon here that looks like a little keypad. When you tap on that, it'll bring up the numbers and allow you to enter a phone number 
to send the text to. So I just put in the phone number and then I'm gonna hit the check. And now it set me up to be able to send a text message. So here at the bottom it says text message. When I tap in this box, that's gonna bring up the keyboard. If you ever see a box where you can enter text when you tap in it, that brings up the keyboard so that you can begin to enter things. So maybe I just wanna say, hi, how are you? Okay, hi, how are you? And then I'm gonna hit this arrow that's pointing to the right to send the message. Now, if you wanna send one of those cute emojis or those little pictures, you can tap on this little emoji button here, and this will allow you to send an emoji or a little picture. So maybe you can send the laughing face and then hit this button again to send the message. Now, if you wanna send someone a picture, you would need to tap on this button that's to the left of where it says text message. So there's this section to the left. This is your button that will allow you to send a picture. So here, I can look at all the pictures I currently have on the phone. So for example, right here, and if you wanna take a picture you've already taken, you can simply tap on it, and it's gonna add it to the text message so you can send it. And then um, I can also tap on this option here, which is the camera option, and I can take a picture right now and send that picture. So it went a little fast. Okay, so I'm gonna tap here. Oh, okay, so you need to just point to something first and then tap the white button to take the picture. It'll let you see what you've taken, then tap attach. And if we swipe down, now we can see we've just attached two pictures to our text message, and then I'm gonna hit the arrow to send it. So that's how you send a text message and how you uh, attach a picture as well. Let's use our back button here. I wanna get out of this message and go back to the main screen of text messages. So I'm gonna use my back button and that's gonna take me one step. Let's hit it again. And now we're back on the main screen of the text messaging app. Now guess what? I have a few um, spam text messages so we're gonna use them as examples in the video. So right here is a message that someone has already sent me so guess what? I see a little one to the right of this message. This tells me this is a new text message. So if I wanna look at the message, I'm gonna tap on the message. Here's all the information. And then if I wanna respond, I can simply tap in the box again that says text message. That'll bring up the keyboard. And then I can say stop, as in don't send me text messages again. And then I'm going to hit the send button. And now it's gonna tell that person, hey, stop sending me spam messages. There we go. All right, so we're all done with text messages, so I'm gonna use my home button to get back to the home screen. And that is simply how you send and uh, look at text messages. In this section, I'll be talking about how to download applications. So if you wanna download an app, remember app is short for applications, um, which is like games, or other uh, productivity um, programs, you're gonna go to the Play Store. That's this icon here. The Play Store is where you find all of the uh, programs or apps you can download on the phone. Now, if you tapped on the Play Store icon, just like I did, and you don't see this on your screen, you might see a pop-up that says, sign into a Google account. If you see that on screen, you'll need to sign into a Gmail account, and if you don't have one, you'll need to create one. So um, in the bottom left corner of your screen, you should see a button that says Create or Create Gmail. You'll need to tap on that button and follow the steps. It'll take you literally one minute. It'll ask for your first name, last name, and what you want your email address to be. It'll create it, you'll have to accept a few prompts, and then it will take you to this screen. So I just wanted to clarify that in case some of you are not seeing what I'm seeing on my screen right now. That would be the reason why. Okay, so we're in the uh, Play Store. This is where you download apps. And let's say you wanna download uh, a solitaire app because you wanna play a game on your phone. So at the top of the screen, there's a search box here. You're gonna tap in the box 
and we can either type in solitaire or simply start typing the word. You'll notice as you start typing, it'll begin to recommend options and here it is. I can just tap here to get to solitaire um, or let's hit our back button to go back one step. There's another way that's easier and faster and that's if you tap on the microphone that's right next to the search box, you can simply say the app that you're searching for um, and it, it will automatically search it with your voice, just like this. Solitaire. So that's an easy way if you don't know how to spell the name of the app you're trying to find or you just want to speed up the process. So now I have a list of, of some of the solitaire games that are available. And let's see, I want to look at this one. Let's see, that one's already on the phone. Let's find another one here. Okay, let's look at this one here. And you can always see pictures of what the app looks like. And I like to use those pictures to determine if, um, if it's an app that I want to download, if it looks like it'll be fun. If it does, I'm going to tap on this blue install button. And right now I'm getting a prompt here. It's just letting me know that I should add a credit card on the account. And I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to hit skip. Keep in mind that not all the apps are free. Some of the apps are paid apps. And so if you notice the, the, the blue button that we tapped said install. If it ever doesn't say install, if it has a price, it's letting you know it's not a free app. You need to make sure you're okay paying for an app because um, there might be a free version out there. I always say look for a free version first. If you can't find it, then obviously go with the paid version if it's something you need to have. Okay, so our solitaire game has finished installing and I know that because now our little blue button says play. So I'm gonna tap on the play button and it'll ask you to accept a few things and then we are in and able to start playing solitaire on our phone, just like that. So that is the process to download an app. Now. Let me swipe up here. So this is actually a really important thing to show you. So guess what? Right now we don't see our home button on the screen. Sometimes when you're playing a game or sometimes when you're watching a video, the buttons are going to be hidden. So to get to the buttons, you simply need to take your finger, put it at the bottom of the phone and swipe up and your buttons will pop up for a few seconds. So right now I'm gonna swipe up and then hit the home button and that allows me to get out of the app, okay? And if I swipe up, you're gonna see my new solitaire game right here, okay? So let's go back to the Play Store. Now, pop quiz, if I wanna go back to the Play Store, how do I do that? I can obviously go to the main screen and tap it here but there's another way for me to get there, and that is tapping on the recent apps. By tapping on recent apps, I can swipe over, and guess what? Here's our Play Store. It's still open because we never closed it, so I can simply tap here to get right back to where we were before we downloaded the Solitaire game. Okay, I'm gonna use my back button to get out of this Solitaire page. I'm gonna press it one more time. And now I'm back on the main screen of the Play Store. I just want to show you how to navigate the store because there's a lot going on. So right underneath this little search box, you're going to see um, some categories. So for you, top charts. So they're showing you these are the most popular apps that are being downloaded right now. There's a kids section. You can find apps specifically for kids. There is a category section. You can look for very specific things, maybe something for your car or beauty or um, events. So there's, there's, there are over a million apps in the store. And so this is why it's important for you to know how to navigate because you can get lost looking for things. If you don't know what you're looking for, but you wanna see what's available, start with a category that, that interests you and then see what apps are available in that section, okay? back button to get out, back button again. If you're looking for games, you can tap on the games tab at the bottom here, and this will show you specifically the best games right now 
games that are free and games that are paid. So spend some time scrolling through there to find uh, some apps and games that would be relevant to you. We're all done, so we're going to hit the home button. And we are all done with downloading apps. Okay, in this next section, we're going to talk about how to make the text or the words larger on the screen. So we'll need to swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and we're going to tap on this settings wheel in the bottom right corner. And we will go to the display section and then swipe up and you're going to go to display size and text. And here you have some controls that will allow you to make text larger and it'll show you what it's going to look like once you make the changes. So let's start with font size, hit the plus and you can see these icons. You're going to see how big the words get as you increase. So this is the largest you can make the icon sizes. And now there's the display size, so I can jump to the right here. And you can see how much bigger everything gets as I increase the display size. There we go. So this is the largest for both. You can even then make the text bold to make it even easier to see. So if I hit the home button, everything is going to look a lot bigger on the home screen. All the titles are bigger if I swipe up. All the titles are bigger. If I go to Google Chrome and I try to go to, um, let's see, let's go to AOL.com. You can see as I search, all the text is bigger. So this is just, that's the way you make the text larger. Now, some of you might say, that's too big. I don't need it that big. No problem. You'll simply need to play around with the sizes until you find a combination that makes sense for you. Okay, so play around with font size, display size, and decide if you need bold or not, and find the right mix so you can read everything on your screen. That's a quick rundown of how to make the text larger. Now, next, let's go over how to set up your email. So if you wanna add your email accounts to the phone, you're gonna to go to the Gmail app on the main screen, you'll find a folder. This is the Google folder. If you tap on the folder, you'll see all of your Google apps in one shot. We're gonna go to the Gmail app. Now, some of you might be saying, I don't have a Gmail. I have an AOL. Or you can say, oh, I don't have an AOL. I have an sbcglobal.net. Whatever type of email you have, it doesn't matter. Um, you can sign in on most email accounts using the Gmail app. So watch this. I'm going to tap on this little icon in the upper right corner. And I'm going to tap add another account. And here it will bring, bring up a page that says set up your email. Now some of you, it took you right to this page. If it took you right here, it means you're not currently signed into a Gmail account. No problem. Either way, you want to get to this page and then you want to select the type of email that you have so you can sign into it. If you have a Gmail, you go here. If you have a Outlook, Hotlook, Hotmail, Live, here, Yahoo, Office 360. Now, if you don't see your email type on the screen here, no problem. Let me walk you through what to do there. Hit the home button. Well, the Play Store where it says search, you're gonna tap in the box, and then you're gonna hit this button in the upper, in the, excuse me, the bottom left corner, which is the uh, special characters button. Tap on the at symbol. After you do that, tap on the ABC button, bottom left corner, and type in what email type you have. For example, if you have joe.smith, at sbcglobal.com, you want to type in what you see after the at symbol. So at, and I'm going to type sbcglobal.net. And make sure you type it correctly. I did not type the word right, so type it in. And then tap on the magnifying glass, and that's going to do a search. And this is going to bring up apps that are compatible with sbcglobal.net. 
So these are all options. You can, for example, go to this email type, tap on email, and then tap install. And guess what? Once this one downloads, we can use this email app to sign into myspcglobal.net. So that's pretty easy there. Now let's go back. What if you have an AOL? Let's tap in the box, tap on the magnifying glass. Let's use this button. This is our back button here to erase all the text up into the at. Tap on AOL.com and hit the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner to search. And guess what? It's saying, hey, just download the AOL app and then you can use that to sign to your email. So these are a few recommendations you can follow that will help you sign into your email accounts. Let's hit the home button. That'll conclude our section of signing into email accounts. Now for the last section, we're going to go over how to take pictures, how to take videos, and then how to find them after you've taken them. So let's tap on the camera in the bottom right corner. Now I'm going to pick up the phone, but Try to hold it at an angle so you can still see what's going on. Okay, so we're on the photo section right now. Tap on the white button to take the picture. Pretty self-explanatory. If I want to take a video, I can tap on the video section or on the video button. And now my white circle changes to a white circle with a red dot in the center. That's how you know you're on video recording mode. You can start recording video. And then you can tap this button to snap pictures while you're recording the video. Tap that button to stop it. Now, let's talk about how do I find my picture once I've taken it? Let's hit the home button. And on Motorola phones, they use Google Photos as the main app for pictures. So you'll wanna tap on Photos and hit no thanks here. And now I can look at all the pictures that we just took on the phone here. Okay. Now, one recommendation, if you're not a fan of Google Photos and you want something that's even simpler than this to use for pictures, hit the home button. We're gonna go to the Play Store and we're gonna tap in the box here and type in gallery. There is a new Google app called gallery that is a really great option. Tap install. Gallery is like Google Photos, it just doesn't back up your pictures. So if you want a cleaner interface to look at for your pictures, we're gonna go there, hit the home button, we're gonna swipe up and go to our app section and look for the gallery app which is here. Tap allow. And now we can look at our pictures in here and it's a much cleaner interface uh, for the phone. And that's it. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I love making this video. I love to educate people on how to use smartphones. If this is your first time with this phone, I hope you found this video helpful. Do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know if the video was helpful. And also if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, uh, I'm planning to make a part two of this video. So if there's other things you'd like to learn, please drop it in the comment section so I can add it to the next video. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Thanks again for watching. Take care, and as always, have a good one.